Presidential candidate of the African Democratic Congress, Dumebi Kachuku, will on Tuesday give a State of the Nation address. Hi, welcome to what's happening. These are the top 10 stories. At number one, worried by the spate of killings in the country, especially the recent attack on the Kujie Medium Security Custodial Center, wherein scores of terrorists were released, the presidential candidate of the African Democratic Congress, Dumebi Kachuku, will on Tuesday give a State of the Nation address. Mr. Kachuku is expected to speak during an emergency National Executive Committee and Board of Trustees meeting. He will use the opportunity to speak to Nigerians on born in national issues. Party sources said the meeting, which is being called at the instance of Kachuku, will hold on Tuesday, 12th of July 2022 at 7 p.m. and will be aired on some national broadcast stations and key social media channels. At number two, operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency have arrested one of the wanted terror suspects who escaped from the Medium Security Correctional Center, Kujie in Abuja, following an attack on the facility by terrorists. The Director of Media and Advocacy at the NDOEA, Femi Baba Femi, who confirmed this in a statement on Monday, identified the suspect as Suleiman CD. Suleiman's arrest came three days after another suspected terrorist who fled the correctional facility, Hassan Hassan, was recaptured in Nasarawa State. Meanwhile, in a statement issued in MENA on Monday by the Police Command spokesperson Wasiyu Abiodun, a patrol team on surveillance between the General Hospital Suleja and Bakasi arrested another wanted terrorist named Kazim Mutala on July 9th at 8.30 p.m. And number three gunmen in the early hours of Monday attacked the home of Yusuf Lassun, the governorship candidate of the Labour Party in Ocean State. The former deputy speaker had taken to his Twitter handle to raise an alarm over the attack. No one was hurt in the incident. The attack on the home of Mr. Lassin came hours after his participation in the governorship debate in Oshubu. He blamed insecurity in the state and across Nigeria for the attack, adding that the police and state security service are working to arrest those behind the attack. At number four, a federal high court sitting in Lagos on Friday reminded a Nigerian billionaire, Okatu Malinson, who was linked to the suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, Abba Kiaris, alleged three billion naira had drug in the facility of the Nigerian Correctional Services. Justice Peter Lufu ordered the remand of Malison alongside a complaint, Sunday Ibekute. They are facing a three-count charge bordering on conspiracy, trafficking of 322 kilograms of tramadol leveled against them by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. The pair pleaded not guilty to the charges preferred against them. Justice Lifu, however, adjourned the matter till July 18th. At number five, fire got to the session of the popular body market in Ibadan, the Oyo State Capital, on Monday morning. Traders were said to have lost goods worth millions of naira in the incident. The cause of the fire could not be immediately ascertained and no casualties reported. The Director of Operations of your State Fire Service, Ismail Adeleke, who confirmed the incident, advised residents of the state to always put safety measures in place to prevent fire outbreaks and to always call fire service immediately if there is an outbreak. At number six, Nigerians continue to lament as the price of fuel remains high. Some fueling stations in the Federal Capital Territory and other states dispense premium motor spirits between 200 naira per litre to 250 naira per litre, higher than the government approved retail price of 165 naira per litre. It was gathered that the worsening queues for petrol were due to the insufficient supply of products by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company. The queues for petrol in Abuja has not ceased since February this year. All marketers deny claims of product hoarding or diversion as they stress that the insufficient supply of PMS by NNPC and the non-payment of bridging claims for the transportation of petrol were the key reasons for the scarcity. At number seven, the Federal Road Safety Corps Lagos State has directed its patrol teams to look out for vehicles that violate requirements for minimum safety standards as such will be impounded henceforth. The command said that this is to get such vehicles rectified, thereby stopping them from causing hazards to themselves and other road users. The core commander, Lagos State, Olushogun Ogumbemide, who disclosed this in a statement, also warned motorists in the states to always exercise caution while driving. He said this was to avert the hazards associated with heavy rain and flood during the season. At number eight, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control says the number of Lassa fever infections since the beginning of the year is 829 with 160 deaths. The recent situation report released for the week 26 by the NCDC also shows that there are 5,510 suspected cases of the infection across 98 local government areas in 24 states. Following the outbreak of the viral infection this year, 
the National Emergency Operations Center Response Mode Level 2 was activated for effective multi-sectoral and multidisciplinary coordination. And number nine, the Federal High Court of Nigeria has issued a new practice directions that will guide the hearing and determination of pre-election suits. The practice direction issued in the build-up to next year's general elections comes on the heels of the broad policy on the handling of election-related matters issued by the National Judicial Council in May. The Chief Judge of the Federal High Court, John Soho, says the purpose of the new practice direction is to provide for a fair, impartial and expeditious determination of pre-election cases, among others. The circular was signed by Catherine Christopher, Assistant Director of Information at the Court and dated July 7. Finally, at number 10, the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria says it will investigate the extortion of some intending pilgrims. Reacting to a viral video where the allegation was made by an intending pilgrim, Nakon Chairman Chief Executive Officer Alaji Zikrula Kunle Hassan denied requesting or collecting money from any pilgrim. He added that the issue would be investigated and probably handed over to the anti graft agencies. Some licensed tour operators allegedly collected extra money from some intending pilgrims claiming that such amount was requested by Nakan for their prompt airlifting. That's all for today. Please do well to get your permanent voters cards as the 2023 general election is almost here. See you next time on What's Happening.